Magdalo Representative Gary Alejano files an impeachment complaint against President Duterte at the Office of Secretary General of the House of Representatives Thursday. Alejano accuses Duterte of culpable violation of the Constitution, engaging in bribery, betraying public trust, committing graft and corruption, and other high crimes. Iniwala na si Pangulong Duterte ay hindi nararapat na manungkulan bilang pinakamataas sa opisyal ng ating bansa. Kaya po kami ay naghain ng impeachment complaint sa kadalilan ng ito. Ayon sa aming inihain reklamo, naniniwala kami na dahil sa mga krimen at mga paglabag sa ating saligang batas, ang Pangulo ay dapat na panagutin sa mga sumusunod na basihan. Una, culpable violation of the Constitution. Number two, engaging in bribery. Third, betrayal of public trust. Fourth, graft in corruption. And fifth, other high crimes. In an interview with Rappler, Alejano says he filed the impeachment complaint out of a sense of duty. Now, for me, I feel that it is my responsibility, it is my duty to, uh, to do this, to file this as a representative of the people. Alejano also mentions Duterte's alleged secret arrangements with China despite the conflict of interest over the South China Sea or West Philippine Sea. Itong uh, culpable violation of the Constitution sa pagkataroon uh, niya ng uh, secret arrangement with China na hindi alam po ng uh, taong bayan, hindi po alam ng kahit ng kanyang gabinete kung ano bang arrangement ang pinasok niya considering the fact that we have a conflict of interest and uh, competing claims sa West Philippine Sea. At ngayon po, narinig po natin ay uh, ang paghimasok ng China sa Benham Rice. The 1987 Philippine Constitution set specific grounds for impeachment of the President, treason, bribery, graft and corruption, other high crimes, or betrayal of public trust. Once filed with the House Secretary General, a verified complaint will be referred to the Speaker, who shall calendar it. The House Committee on Justice, headed by Oriental Mindoro Representative Reynaldo Omali, is tasked to determine whether the complaint is sufficient in form and substance. Duterte counts at least 267 allies out of 292 legislators in the House of Representatives. Duterte enjoys majority support in the House where a vote of one-third of all members is needed to endorse the complaint to the Senate for trial. Alejano's impeachment complaint is the first to be filed against Duterte. Alejano says based on death penalty bill vote, Duterte's legislative shield is strong. He admits it will be an uphill battle. Presidential spokesperson Ernesto Abella says it's, quote, part of a larger scheme of things. Well, first and foremost, uh, no treason, betrayal of trust, bribery, graft, and corruption, high crime, and culpable violation of the Constitution has been committed. It does seem like part of a larger scheme of things. Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez takes a swipe at Alejano, saying, We are all entitled to our own stupidity. Solicitor General Jose Calida says Alejano is acting like a puppet of Antonio Trellanes, a known critic of the president. Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre says the impeachment complaint against Duterte has no factual and legal basis and was filed in aid of destabilization. But Alejandro says the Duterte administration is destabilizing itself. If you criticize this government, uh, it's already a destabilization move, then there is destabilization all around. Mm -hmm. no? In fact, they were the ones destabilizing themselves. They were the ones destabilizing their government. Mm -hmm. Presidential spokesperson Ernesto Abella says European lawmakers calling for the immediate release of Senator Laila de Lima should respect the Philippine government's handling of her case. The European Parliament is set to decide on a draft resolution calling for the release of de Lima, one of President Rodrigo Duterte's fiercest critics, now detained on drug charges filed by his administration. Abella says European lawmakers are wrong in thinking the government's charges against De Lima are politically motivated. You know, they simply have, seem to have a misunderstanding of what's happening to De Lima. The lady is, is being charged with, with crime, not politi political persuasions. So I think they ought to respect that. The joint motion for the resolution called on Philippine government officials to ensure a fair trial for De Lima to drop all politically motivated charges against her and to end any further acts of harassment against her. The draft resolution comes weeks after Delima was arrested February 24. 
the U.S. Justice Department says two agents of Russia's FSB spy agency and two criminal hackers were indicted Wednesday over a massive cyber attack affecting 500 million Yahoo users. The indictment links Russia's top spy agency to one of the largest cyber attacks in history, carried out in 2014, which officials say was used for espionage and financial gain. Officials identified the agents as Dmitry Dokushayev and Igor Sushin. Acting Assistant Attorney General Mary McCord says the two officers protected, directed, facilitated, and paid criminal hackers to collect information, targeting Yahoo accounts of Russian and U.S. government officials, journalists, and financial service employees. The attack on Yahoo was one of the largest data breaches ever. U.S. President Donald Trump suffers another defeat as a federal court in Hawaii stops his revised travel ban. The order sought to temporarily close U.S. borders to nationals from six Muslim-majority countries. U.S. District Judge Derek Watson ruled that the state of Hawaii, in its legal challenge to the order, had established that the ban would cause irreparable injury were it to go ahead. The court in Honolulu was the first to rule in a trio of legal challenges against the ban, which had been set to go into effect at midnight. Trump quickly vowed to fight the flawed ruling all the way to the Supreme Court if required, describing it as unprecedented judicial overreach. Trump signed a revised ban behind closed doors on March 6 with a reduced scope, exempting Iraqis and permanent U.S. residents. The latest version of the ban included six countries and refugees. The White House said those six countries were targeted because their screening did not meet U.S. security requirements. Watson rejected the White House claim that the order wasn't a Muslim ban. He rules it would not be a leap to conclude that targeting these countries likewise targets Islam. Movie stars Emma Watson and Amanda Seyfried launched legal action Wednesday after private pictures were stolen and posted online. Although the photographs of 26-year-old Watson merely show her trying on outfits, the images of Seyfried showed her in sexually explicit poses. Watson's publicist said her stolen pictures were taken during a fitting she had with a stylist a couple of years ago, adding they are not nude photographs. Media reports said the pictures had been shared on the dark web, an encrypted part of the internet not easily accessible by users lacking specialist knowledge. Amanda Seyfried's legal team said it is pursuing a website that had posted her nude photos. 